Hi, my name's Cameron Carlos from the Anime and Location.tv. I'm here at MetsuriCon 2017 with Miss Julia Madalena. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, how'd I do? All right. So how did you get started in the world of entertainment? Uh, that's a great question. I actually started as a dancer and then doing theater. Yeah. And then I became a professional mime and a professional improvisational artist yeah. as well. And I came to L.A. I did my first film in San Francisco in the Bay Area where okay. I grew up. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. Two, actually, no, one and a half. Yeah, and then I came to L.A. and I started on camera work, commercials, television, film. And somebody said I had a cute voice. <laughs> so in those days, it's 100 years ago, you could actually, like, submit your resume to a working, you know, dubbing studio, yeah. which I did. And they trained me. I learned voiceovers on the job. Wow. Mm -hmm. I say I actually, I actually grew up partially in San Francisco. Oh, where? Uh, Redwood City. Oh, uh, yeah. I grew up Bay Area, San Mateo, Burlingame. Yep, yeah. Yep. So we were probably getting in trouble in the same, you know, city. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So it says in your bio that you happen to work on the Ghost in the Shell franchise okay. uh, and the Fukukomas. How is it like uh, knowing that that it was a great way for a lot of people to kind of get into Ghost in the Shell, especially because just your voice was so cute, providing that for both of them. Also, you had Miss Sandy Fox provide some voices too, so you guys got to play off each other. We did. We had so much fun, so much fun doing those and really never thought they would be having the impact that they've had. But we just had a blast. We got to improvise, especially because a lot of there was a lot of downtime during the original Japanese when they were, you know, on screen. Yeah, so we loved the creative flexibility to voice them and uh, do whatever we wanted. It was a lot of fun. And we're really happy. I'm very, very happy that people enjoyed the characters and it did sort of give them a way to get into the series. I say I found them always so cute because I would watch the films. I've only seen the films. I've never seen the series. Okay. I've only seen the two films. So I always appreciate like hearing like just the cute bubbliness come out of it. Like in such a deep, dark like film. Yeah, it was kind of cathartic to be able to be doing that voice in the show because every once in a while I'd see scenes from it and I'd be going, oh my gosh, this is like so so dark and so heavy. So I was really happy to be able to do those characters in the show. All right, so you also happen to work on the classic uh, Magical Ray Earth. How did you ever think that uh, series would go, and how, do you, how is it awesome that fans are still discovering it to this day? I'm honestly incredibly humbled and, and pleased to hear that it's had the impact that it's had. Um, doing it was a blessing for me. It was my first really big series, first really big show, really, first major character. So I loved it, especially because she was a warrior girl, and that was something that I hadn't really done. No, you really didn't have that many outlets, especially a young girl, which was my voice. So, you know, up until that point, everything was a cutesy little character. So I was intimidated initially, to be honest, by the requirements of the role and actually Eric at Bang Zoom, Eric Sherman was my director, right? And it was their show and I remember trying to get out of it because I was thinking, this is a huge commitment, I have a little baby at home, I know you, you know, you guys can't relate, but you know, that was, it was kind of overwhelming at first and he talked me into staying and being a part of it and I'm really glad he did because it ended up being just such a joy. I loved her character. Yeah, and um, the fact that you are the main character in the show speaks a lot of volume to you and then to the character itself. So, I mean, you talked about so much here, but like what, what other thing maybe may have impacted you about doing that character? Oh, she was beautiful, strong, kind, and independent. Some elements that you didn't see often in some of the female characters. I loved that she was both a child and a warrior. I loved that she grew into being the leader that she was invited basically to be, right? Right? Just kind of plucked out. Yeah. And I, um, I was impressed by her sacrifices, uh, the things that she left behind, and the things she was willing to, to fight for. It was an, an inspirational character for me. I'm not gonna lie. Now I have to go watch it. I've never <laughs> seen. I've never seen the show. Oh, you haven't? No. That's all right. You do need to go see it. I mean, I don't know if it. I don't know if you would enjoy it, but it's 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 pretty sweet. It's pretty neat. I like like shows like Oran. I still like shows like Oran High School Host Club, oh, uh, which yeah. is like not a typical like guy show, but I love it to death. Oh, you might. Yeah. You might. Yeah. So um, 
you amazingly got to work on Near Automaton, which is such a very oddball but really well loved uh, game. So, what was it like for you to work on that? I mean, considering it's like this weird mix of fantasy and sci fi and all wrapped into one. Well, the nature of games is a little different than you would imagine once you're actually playing the game because we just go in and we record our lines wild. Sometimes we don't even know what our actual character's name is, and we often don't know what the project is that we're working on. So it was only in hindsight that I got to go, oh, I'm so glad I got to work on this, you know, this game, because I didn't really realize what I was doing at the time. Same thing with um, the Fire Emblem Heroes, did not know what I was getting into with that. Is that next? Did I jump ahead? That was another one, too, where play went in and did my usual game thing, which is you go in and you record all your lines wild, very fun, uh, creating three unique characters based on the direction, getting the context. I think Wendy Lee was directing me on that one. Yeah, yeah. so it was very fun to do. Had no idea what I was getting into. And I remember students from one of my acting classes said, oh, you're in this new game, Fire Emblem Heroes. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I am. She goes, no, no, you are. And I said, no, really, I, I don't think I am. Because I didn't know the name of the show when I was doing it, yeah. And she goes, no, no, she was trying to show me stuff and it wasn't until my son called me. And he goes, mom, I'm playing this game and listen. And he played it, one of my characters for me and he goes, this is you. And I go, oh, am, I, am I credited on that? And he said, yeah, you are. And I go, oh my gosh, that was the game that I was working on. So I had to go back to my student and go, sorry, you were right. And that's what happens often, mostly with games. Because with series, you have a much better idea. Yeah. yeah. It's like a one-shot go. It's a one-shot. It's a one-off. You go, you record all your lines wild, and that's it. Alrighty, and now uh, a fun fact about you is that you're from Cleveland of all places, and we have several of our other friends, Mr. Quentin Flynn, uh, um, Yuri Lowenthal is from Ashland, Ohio, um, Amber Lee Connors is from uh, Brunswick, Strongsville, and Damon Mills is from Akron. Okay. So what's it like knowing that you're a part of this nice new group of people? It's actually kind of cool because the only identity I always had with Ohio, especially Cleveland, was my relatives, and they always made a joke about it. Especially the year that the, was it the lake that caught on fire? It was the river. In it was the river. Actually, the river catching on fire in 1969 actually led to one of the most beneficial environmental protections ever. It's it actually led to the Environmental Protection Agency under, of all presidents, a crook named Richard Nixon. Okay, that's a, that's a fun fact. I'm a geologist. You are? Okay, you are. That is awesome. Okay, so that's good news. I will pass that on to my family. They'll be happy to know. Something good came out of that. Yeah, so that and identifying with comedians when I was growing up and seeing a lot of comedians from Cleveland. And I thought, okay, clearly it's a coping mechanism, but that's okay. That's okay. It worked. Alrighty. So um, now it says in your bio that uh, this is now technically your second anime convention. How's it like coming out to these and getting to meet more and more fans? I mean, like you said, it's only your second time. So what's it like for you to come out and meet them? Well, it's such a blessing. Um, back when I was doing anime, cons weren't what they are now. You know, and then I took time off to raise my kids and I was still doing voiceovers, but I wasn't promoting. I wasn't doing any kind of self-promotion. So it's been really, really fun, especially under the uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth sort of reunion theme to be able to come back and meet people that were fans of that show when I would have otherwise missed that round, you know, because cons weren't as big as they are now. So I'm very, very happy to be able to meet the fans and hear their stories. It's been a blessing. Alrighty, And um, now um, we're going to ask this. Because it's Matsuri Khan is Magical Girl versus Anime, okay. uh, Magical Girl versus Mecha. Okay. What side do you support? Well, I, I'm old school, so I have to say Magical Girl. I have to. Mecha's really fun, but personal preference, Magical Girl. Sorry, it's a girl thing, I think. I don't know, I can't even say that. That wouldn't be fair to the girls that prefer Mecca. So there you go. That's mine. <laughs> Alrighty, and um, what um, what series do you want to talk about at this time that you're allowed to talk about? We know about the pesky NDA. So what is there on the books that you want fans to check out that is currently available? Well, I, I, I think you guys know about everything that's current that I can talk about without having to kill you. So I think you guys are pretty current. I did recently just do Everything Everything, a movie that came out. I did one of the um, I was doing all the animated uh, blood cells in an animated sequence in that live action film. So that was really fun. So that's out and you can see that. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else besides that. There's a web series that's coming, but I can't talk about that yet either. So there you go. Alrighty, and now is there a way that fans can keep up with you on the internet? And then a wonderful message for all the wonderful fans that have kept up with you for the last 30, 40 years. God bless them. Uh, yes, keeping up with me on the internet, I do have a fan page, Julie Madalena Cleaver. 
And to my fans who have kept up with me for all these years, thank you so much. Thank you for your love and your support. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for supporting the projects that we've made. It's allowed anime to become what it is today. And it's allowed so many of us to be able to continue to work. So God bless you. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you, Julia. It's wonderful to meet another native Clevelander. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>